Alright guys, as today is the release date for the new Emerald Coast, it's time to, as always, go over all the locations, all the times, and every single hotspot map to hunt all the species on this fantastic new map. Alright, first of all, here I leave you this image with all the outpost locations, there are exactly 22 outposts on the map and it's very important to unlock at least the majority of them to have easy access to some of the hotspots I will mention on this video. Now we're gonna start by going over all the places where it's possible to find one of the new species that is present on this emerald coast, which is the Rusadir. You know, the Rusadir is one of the most beautiful animals that can be hunted here in Australia, and it is mainly present across the southeastern region and a good part of the southwestern region. These two areas, along with a few other places, are the locations on which you will want to focus while looking for Rusadir need zones. However, within these areas there are a few specific spots where the population density of these guys tends to be higher than usual. You know, these are places that you could call Rusadir hotspots. So the first of those hotspots is actually an area that is full of these guys, you can expect to find many feed zones and resta zones mainly on the right side of the river and also in between this lake and the river, it is just fantastic, hence it is one of the best areas to hunt Rusadir during the day on the entire map, although if you don't want to spend too much time looking for the zones on these open areas, you also have the option to hunt them during their drink time, which is from 2000 to midnight. You know, at this time you'll notice that the amount of stacks that drink on this part of the river as well as on this lake is quite insane. And in fact, the same can be said about the area around this little lake on this northeastern region. It is also fantastic to find stacks and herds at pretty much any time of the day, and also if you decide to hunt them while they are drinking, it's very likely you'll find quite a number not only on this lake but also along this part of the river. Now, the next species we're gonna cover are both the Sambar deer and the Hawk deer. You know, these two species actually inhabit the exact same locations, they share the same home range, and therefore all the spots I'ma mention are good for both. So, first of all, in comparison with the Rusa deer, the Sambar deer and the Hawk deer actually cover a bigger portion of the map, including some of the locations where the Rusa deer is also present, like for example, the last area I mentioned for the Rusa deer is also quite decent to hunt these two species. Also, apart from this area, another place that has a strong presence of these two animals is definitely the northern and central region of the map. Here there's a good chance you'll come across a good amount of individuals, whether you're looking for feed zones or resta zones, or if you decide to hunt them at their drink time, there's always the option to look for them at any of the lakes located within this region, which are not too bad. Also another great area to hunt this species is definitely this western region, where as you can see there are also quite a few lakes, where of course you have the option to hunt these animals while they are drinking, but let me tell you that this area is really really good to find feed zones and resta zones, so it's up to you to decide when you're gonna hunt these animals, but if you ask me I would say that hunting them outside of their drink time is way more fun. Eight fifty six to eleven hundred kgs, that is the track of a potential level nine saltwater crocodile. It's very likely he's sitting somewhere around those mangroves because at the moment we're at the crocodile rest time and these mangrove swamps are exactly the kind of place where these guys like to rest. And they're also probably the most dangerous location on the entire map, since these swamps are one of the main habitats of the crocodiles and consequently they are absolutely flooded with them. So don't be surprised if you receive multiple attacks while exploring these kind of areas. Now going over all the locations where it's possible to find crocodiles, I gotta say that the crocodile home range is one of the most simple home ranges I've seen on this game, and I would even say that the crocodile is the easy species to hunt on the Emerald Coast. You know their habitat essentially starts on the superior segment of the mangrove swamps you can find on this map, there are many of them here, and what can I say about the entire East Coast? I mean, the amount of crocodiles that can be found resting on this area is just amazing, and the best thing is that they rest exactly at the shore, so it's really easy to see them on the open. Essentially, the whole coast is amazing, and this big patch of mangrove swamps is also a fantastic place to find them while they are resting. And actually, the same can be said about this river confluence or intersection, where you can also expect to find a fair amount of individuals. And there we have our max estimate, level 7. He's perfectly broadside, so I'ma take what I think is the best shot you can possibly take on a gator or a crocodile, which is the next shot. It's by far the easiest shot you can take on these guys because it is really hard to miss and it always results on an instantaneous death. 
So as long as you're using an appropriate rifle for class 7, the only thing you have to do is to aim right behind the head. And that will do it. If you ask me, I would say that these crocodiles have one of the best models of all the new species. I mean, they all look fantastic, but the level of detail on these guys is top notch. They look incredible. Now, the next species on this guide is the Banting. The Banting, very similarly to the Salwar Crocodile, mainly inhabits the areas that are close to the beach, being the majority of their population present along this northeastern border of the map as well as on this southeastern border. As you can see, their home range is very limited, it's very straightforward, so it's not too hard to find them. And this is actually one of those cases where the time you choose to hunt them is not too relevant because they can only be on a handful of places and the only thing you have to do is to move close to the coast and you're gonna find plenty of them, guaranteed. Now, you may be wondering if these bantings actually have a drink time, and the answer is that yeah, they have a drink time, but the thing is that they drink exactly at the shore where the crocodiles like to rest. So, keep in mind that if you decide to hunt them at this time, from 1700 to 2000, you'll experience an absolute chaos on the beach. You'll see a lot of bantings running, some of them even going aggressive towards the crocodiles, and overall it's a fun experience. Now, that's a huge pull. A label for Banting with a top estimate of 143, while the diamond score is 137. You know, he may not be a level 5, but the thing with the Bantings is that it's not too rare for them to make it below max level, in fact it's quite common. So I certainly wouldn't be surprised if this guy is actually diamond. Alright, at the moment we are on one of my favorite places to hunt Bantings while they are drinking, not only because of the high number of Bantings that you can spot over that side of the lake right here, but mainly because from all the bodies of water where Bantings can drink, this one is the only one that doesn't have a single crocodile. So this is literally the only place where you don't have to worry about the crocs spooking your hearts at their drink time and that certainly makes it one of the best locations to hunt Bantings on the entire map. Now I'ma shoot this guy. We're gonna use the 470 this time. Let's see. And that was definitely viral, although a second shot wouldn't hurt. Let's see how big it is. As I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a diamond because the estimate was absolutely massive, and I'm pretty sure those horns are the same size as one of the diamond level 4s I got. So let's check them out. 137.83 Diamond. A level 4 Diamond Banting. Another one. He is barely a diamond, but the fact he made it is more than enough to consider this a very nice trophy. Alright guys, now it's time to go over the locations to hunt the magpie goose. You know, the magpie goose is an animal that only lands on the locations where there are mangroves, on the mangrove swamps. So the first of those swampy places is this area right here, which is one of the locations where I would recommend you to place some decoys. Just remember to place at least 20 to have the maximum attraction range. Now the second location where these geese can land is on this river confluence, on this swampy area full of mangroves and crocodiles, which is a decent place to hunt these guys, but it's nowhere near to be as good as this other location, which as you can see is a big swampy region and undoubtedly the place with the largest population of magpie geese in the entire map. Now the main issue while hunting these guys are definitely the crocodiles, because being both species part of the same home range, it is inevitable to avoid the crocs spooking the flocks when they are about to land. It is certainly really annoying because the crocs spook pretty much everything and these areas are just full of them. As you can see these guys are already spooked, they are flying away. So what I think is a good way to counter this issue is to simply place a tent next to the decoys and go to the main menu, just to go back to a tent and respawn, taking advantage of the fact that crocodiles and pretty much all the animals won't spawn in a radius of 200 meters from the tent whenever you spawn on it. I mean, here I just came back from the main menu and as you can see the flock is completely calm, basically because the crocodiles that were close to the tent didn't spawn this time because I just spawned here. 
Of course this advantage won't last forever because more crocodiles are gonna start arriving to the area from outside the 200 meter radius and they are gonna start spooking the flocks. So we only have a couple minutes before the area gets flooded with crocodiles and we have to go to the menu again. And in that time the thing I wanna shoot is definitely that max estimate level 4. And that's it, we got two. Let's see. 3.6, he's a gold. And the diamond score is 3.85, so he's not that close. Still a very nice looking gander, he has the yellow plumage, which I imagine can be noticed by watching the beak or the legs, since those are the only yellow areas on this course. You know, the stubble quail, just as most of the upland birds, is a species that is not exactly easy to hunt. I mean, the home range of these guys basically covers the entire map. There's not a single place without stubble quail except for the coast, so their zones can be found anywhere around the map, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they are easy to find because they are quite spread out. So of course it's really hard to know where these guys will be since they can be pretty much anywhere, although there are some places where you have a higher chance to come across some feed zones and resta zones. For example, if you move close to these brownish areas next to a river, the odds of you coming across on flocks are quite high I would say because these are open areas where animals tend to place their need zones. Ok, that may not be a max level, but I gotta say that a top estimate of 529 is a really intriguing estimate for a level 8. I'm not gonna call it a diamond potential because we know that the levels on the kangaroos are quite off, they are similar to how the caribous and the reindeers are, where the level 5s troll a lot and the level 4s can even be silver, so this guy will most likely score at the bottom of the estimate, but I'm still curious to see how big a level 8 can get before becoming a troll level 9. So before we go for the quail I was chasing, we're gonna shoot this guy. First of all, I'm alert him to make him stand up and get a better angle to reach the barrels. You know, the kangaroos always stand up when they go alert and you can actually take advantage of this because when they're on their feet it's really easy to hit the chest which is where the lungs are located. So if you wanna get a good short angle on one of these guys, it's as simple as just doing a couple short runs to alert him, make him stand up and then you can easily drop him. As simple as that. Now, as for all the locations to look for kangaroos here on Emerald Coast, first of all, we have this tribe on Plateau, which seems to be the region with the largest population of kangaroos in the entire map. Apart from there, you can also find them in exactly another three areas, where there's also a good population of kangaroos, but nothing compared to the amount you can find on the Outback region. It is also worth mentioning that kangaroos do have a drink time, although it is at night, from midnight to 3am, so hunting them while they are drinking is also an option, but I have to say that it is one of those cases where hunting feed zones and rest zones is more rewarding than hunting drink zones, because the areas I mentioned are really good to find them during the day. Now, as for this guy, a 458.29 score, he wasn't that big. He's actually a regular size mythical, even though the estimate was massive, he ended up scoring at the bottom of it, so he's not special. Now, before we conclude this guide, we're gonna go over all the locations to hunt the remaining species, which are the fallow deer, the red deer, the feral goat, the feral pig, the axis deer, and of course, the red fox. So, first of all, as for the places where you can find feral goats, the only place where it's possible to find these guys is on the Southback region. You know, these guys drink from 1200 to 1500, and of course, all the bodies of water within this area are fantastic to find them. Now, the next species is the red fox, and all I must say is that their population is evenly distributed across the whole map, so you're gonna find them wherever you go. Ok, as for the rest of the species, what I found is that they actually inhabit very similar locations, if not the same. So here I leave you these reference maps with all the potential locations where you may find these species drinking, and I gotta say that even though these maps have a high percentage of accuracy, there's still a chance I'm missing some locations because these maps are based off my own map on early access, and I would say it's likely that there are some potential locations that are simply not present on my map, and hence I didn't include it on these maps. However, you can be sure that as soon as I discover any of those missing locations, in case there are actually any, I will quickly add them to these maps, and as soon as they are ready, I'll make sure to upload them to my Discord server as soon as possible.